All right, now I do want to emphasize, especially for your graded homework, all right, we're not going to actually work one out. I'm just going to do a scenario here. I generally have a tendency to color code these when I do them with a, just like I did with a system of um, equations. All right, let's suppose maybe we graph one line and it is a solid line and it says that we're going to shade this way. All right, when I go to the system, I sometimes do do the arrows because you get a lot of shading. All right, and it really starts to look cluttered. All right, then let's say you put your second line on, maybe it has an opposite slope, and it maybe it's dotted as opposed to solid. All right, so when you do a system, you could have two solid lines, you could have two dotted lines, one of each. All right, then let's say the shading on this one was also on the top. All right, so I would probably do it like this as opposed to actually shading the whole entire thing. All right, now the question is what part got shaded twice? Okay, well, if I shade above the blue line, that's shading here. If I shade above the red line, that's shading in here. The part that got shaded twice is the part that is the solution. So this is the solution, all right? The part that gets shaded twice is where the solution is. Now, the thing on the graded homework, all right, if you read the directions very, very carefully, and it'll be on the final exam, it'll probably be even on test two, they want you to write the words solution set in that area. All right, so the part that gets shaded twice, they want you to literally write the words solution set. Those are going to be your directions on your graded homework. All right, when you're doing this in my math lab, again, you're just going to use the paint bucket. You're going to click right in here. It's going to shade that part. Okay. Um, now, the only really other exception to this, we'll do another one here of just a rough sketch. All right. Could I possibly do something like this? Could we graph one line? Maybe it's a dotted line, and you ended up shading to the left of that line. That's always a possibility. All right, when I put the second one on there, maybe it's parallel. And again, maybe it's a dotted line because they both can be dotted or they can both be solid. And maybe when you put the second line on there, you were supposed to shade below that line. Okay, so if you do that and then you look at it, if you ask yourself, okay, over here we asked ourselves what part got shaded twice, all right? Did any part get shaded twice over here? No, because on the blue line we shaded above it. On the red line we shaded below it. There was no part that got shaded two times. So this one is your no solution. So you are going to have some of them that will be no solutions. If no part of the graph gets shaded twice, then there are no solutions for that particular system. So just generically looking at things that we could run into. All right, let's go ahead and do one of the standard ones where we shade twice. And since we didn't do any of the other ones in standard form, we'll do a couple here in standard form for our system. All right, so I'm going to pull up a piece of scrap paper. Let's suppose we've got as a system x minus y is less than 1, and then let's do a 2x plus a 3y greater than or equal to a 12. All right, now you do not have to color code. If you do color code and you make a mistake, you're probably going to be able to find it a little bit easier. All right, so I'm going to do the top one in blue. That shows up blue, and then I'm going to do the bottom one in red. Okay, because we're going to graph both of them, and then we'll have to do the testing of testing zero, zero. All right, so let's look on that, work on that top equation. Okay, so if I have the equation x minus y, I should say inequality. If I have the inequality, x minus y is less than 1. Okay, so we could real easily find x-intercepts. I'm going to go ahead and write this down. My, my hope is that you don't have to write it down, that you can just do the x-intercepts x and y intercepts really quickly, right? c over a, c over a, 1 divided by 1 gives me a y-intercept of 1. So I did c over a, 1 over 1 
So it's going to be 1. If I do the y-intercept, I'm hoping you can just do c over b in your head. 1 over negative 1, it's going to give me a negative 1. So the formula was c over b, 1 over a negative 1, so it gives me a negative 1. So I can graph that really easy, not rewriting it in slope-intercept form, just using the x and y-intercepts. So I'm going to come over here to the x-axis. I'm going to put a dot on 1. I'm going to come to the y-axis, put a dot on negative 1. All right, I'm going to come back up here. I'm going to look at that symbol, and I'm going to check to make sure that, okay, I'm supposed to do dotted. So I'm going to make a dotted line. Now we might as well go ahead and figure out which way we're supposed to shade on that. So then I'm going to test 0, 0. I'm probably going to go ahead and write it down again. So x minus y is less than 1. So I'm going to plug in 0 for the x, 0 for the y. I'm going to have 0 minus 0 is less than. Technically at this point I really don't know. All right, 0 less than 1. I do now know that is a true statement. Okay, so because that's true, I'm going to come over here. I'm going to identify where my 0, 0 is. I tested the point 0, 0. The point above the line made it true, so all those points above the line are going to make it true. Since it's a system, and I don't necessarily want this to be cluttered, I'm going to go to the arrow method. It made it true, so I know I've got a shade above. All right, it just kind of saves on the shading a little bit. Okay, so we've got our first line done. Then you're going to go to your second line, 2x plus 3y, greater than or equal to 12. Okay, so that's my second one. All right, again, I would like to think that we could just do this really, really quickly in our head. I would like to do it without even writing the formula. C over A, C over A, 12 divided by 2. 12 divided by 2 is 6. Okay, Y intercept is C over B, C over B, 12 divided by 3. 12 divided by 3 is 4. All right, that's the point of using these formulas is to be able to do it that fast. 12 divided by 2 is 6, that's my X intercept. 12 divided by 3 is 4, that's my Y intercept. So you can find those really, really quickly. Okay, so we're going to go to the x-axis. I'm going to go to 6. I'm going to put my first dot. Then I'm going to go to the y-intercept, y-axis, and I'm going to go to 4. So y-axis, I'm going to go all the way up to 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. All right, I'm going to look at the symbol. And this one needs a solid line. So this time I get to actually connect it. So rough estimate here. Okay, so I've got my solid line drawn there. Now 0, 0 is going to be below it. I'm going to test that 0, 0 point. Make a decision about where I'm going to shape. All right, so I'm going to write the inequality down again. So I'm going to have the 2x plus the 3y greater than or equal to 12. All right, plugging in 0, 0 is going to make the math, math easy. 2 times 0 plus 3 times 0. Most of you are going to be able to do that in your head. All right, is that greater than 12? Well, it's going to be 0 greater than or equal to 12. 0 is not greater than or equal to 12, so that's a false statement. All right, so here's 0, 0 in relationship to the red line. The point 0, 0 did not make the inequality true. None of these points are going to make it true. So that means the ones on the other side will make it true. So then that means I'm going to shade on the other side. So again, to try to not make this too cluttered, we just draw those arrows telling us we're going to shade up there. All right, now again, this is pretty much just like the little sample I did. What part got shaded twice? All right, that would be the part that's up here. I generally do shade those in. All right, on your grade and homework, I would recommend shading them in. Okay, and then 
if we're doing this per your graded homework, you're going to write the words solution set in that area. It very specifically says that on your test number three. It very specifically says it on the final exam and on your graded homework. Okay, so that's the part that you don't want to forget about this.